I'm a lifelong martial scientist, as you all know. So I'm going to shoot a little quick react video to the UFC tonight, March 27th, 2021, in the year of our Lord, 2013, in the year of mercy. So Sugar Sean O'Malley is who I'll start off with. Uh, versus Thomas Almeida. Then I'll go to Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. And then the main event, which is Stipe Miocic versus Francis Ngannou. All right. Sugar Sean O'Malley has been messed up in a number of fights before. He claimed his last loss to Chido Vera, who I'm a fan of because he's in the 10th Planet system. And I respect that system a lot as a jiu-jitsu practitioner myself. Um, and so he claims that last loss was a fluke. He got hurt and damaged somehow. He was switching like he was the last style bender rather than Israel on this, uh, on this enya. And Thomas Almeida was coming in very safe, very protected, but he kept getting pieced up and Sean O'Malley would come in, box him up a little bit, escape box him up a little bit, escape. He kept doing this thing. It almost sounded like he was going, tss, tss, but he's, he's moving his head left. He's moving his head right. And he's, he's fainting with his head and he's fainting with his punches as well, pulling them back. And then he's occasionally, he's not just boxing him. He's occasionally doing head kick after head kick after front kick. I've never seen this many head kicks in a fight, man. Uh, at least in the past two years, maybe ever. <laughs> this is one of the most head kicks I've ever seen in a fight. Eventually the head kicks got to Thomas Alameda. Sugar Sean had a chance early on that the commentators or the commentary at the chattering class got a wind of, and they said he was wrong to walk off. But you know what? I respect it because a lot of people don't care for the safety and long-term health of other fighters who are standing opposite. And some people like Jorge Masvidal might say you don't have to, but Sugar Sean showed an extra concern. Some people say he was just trying to swag out, could be part of it, but I think he was showing an extra concern for the fighter who sat across from him and would hope that that sort of behavior would be replicated when somebody is opposite him in the cage. Then he gets a chance in the third round to finally do his thing, and he's got Almeida wobbled Almeida from that legendary camp of Vandelay, the axe murderer Silva, probably one of the best nicknames in the sport as well. And he lands a huge kind of Superman punch wall. Almeida is on the ground. End of the fight. It's over. Tyron Woodley versus um, Vicente Luque. Tyron Woodley has been criticized in his past three losses and even in his snooze fests with wonder boy for being too safe for being too afraid to pull the trigger sometimes when the pendulum swings and you've been critiqued a lot you swing it too much in the opposite direction where you need a more middle path and so if he had just turned it up the volume that is a little bit I think he would have done better, but instead he turned it up all the way. That is to say he had the pendulum. I'm just throwing analogies at you swing in the total other direction. Instead of being totally safe, he threw caution to the wind and just started swinging at Vicente Luque. Eventually Vicente Luque got the best of him. I don't think it was that because he had a better chin, but I think it was because Vicente's striking was more accurate. Once they were on the ground, they engaged in some grappling Aaron Woodley himself finished Darren Hill, remember, a couple of years ago with a Darce. And so you'd think he'd know all the mechanics of the Darce and he's trying to escape and he's moving around. He made an effort, but eventually Vicente Luque got a nice clean Darce a la Tony um, El Cucuy. Uh, El Cucuy, I'm forgetting his last name now. Uh, Tony Ferguson, uh, Tony El Cucuy Ferguson. And it was a beautiful Dars. It was a very wonderful Dars choke. It's like a head and arm choke from an angle. I think it's a, one of the very talented strangles. And the beautiful thing about strangles is it doesn't matter how tough you are. You either tap or you get knocked out, uh, meaning you sleep. And it actually looks like he was slept at the end, but he did have a chance to tap out. Maybe upset they held it a little bit longer than he should have, but that's what you got to do, I guess, to play to the whistle of the referee. Finally, you have... The main event, Stipe Miocic, arguably the GOAT of the heavyweight division, which makes him the GOAT of everything else because no other sport 
as a ridiculous weight class style of a rule. And this is the best. And when I mean best, I don't mean, you know, quickest, most efficient technique. Da, 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 da. I mean, who would win in a fight? That's why the heavyweight division is called baddest man on the planet. I wish they would abolish the 265 pound weight limit and just make it absolute. And in fact, get rid of all the weight classes and just make it absolute division. That's another story. That's putting excellence and greatness as a standard, as opposed to, you know, uh, letting everybody in the peanut gallery get some shine. So anyway, Francis Nganu got Usman, who is the Nigerian or African welterweight champion, to give him some tips. He got Mike Tyson, one of the arguable goats in heavyweight boxing, to give him some tips. And we saw that help him out here in his match with Stipe Miocic today. As you probably know by now, Francis Ngannou won, spoiler alert, over. Should be watching a reaction video if you haven't seen it, unless you don't care about spoilers. So Stipe Miocic tried to trade with Ngannou, but was a little bit more hesitant. And Ngannou himself was more slow paced. He was calm. He was getting emotional support, he said, after the fight from Usman, who is uh, his wrestling coach in this event as well. So he was calm and he was out striking Stipe. So then Stipe goes to the wrestling, shocking the world. Ngannou was able to stuff the takedown and land a number of hits. They get to the second round. They're exchanging hits again. Eventually, Stipe is knocked to the ground. Stipe gets back up. They have a few exchanges. Stipe feels that he has an opportunity to jump in. And when he feels like he has the opportunity to jump in, even though by this point, he's eaten like 30 Nganu punches, which is supposed to be like 1,200 on the little Dragon Ball Z punch meter that they have. And by this point, he's eaten maybe 10 times the amount of punches that any other heavyweight has uh, at least in terms of significant strikes has ever had. So you got to respect the chin. But at the end of the day, Stephen Miocic is finite. He's a human being. He fell. I think he probably should have retired after his three-peat victory with DC. He should definitely retire now. But if he wants to continue, he'll definitely be a contender for another two to three years. I don't think he's going to be able to defeat this revamped Frankenstein version of Nganu. So... The way Ngannou finishes him is with a very tight, very efficient, quick left hook while Stipe is coming in. I believe he learned that left hook from Mike Tyson, and he learned the stuffing of the grappling, which led to like 15 punches, uppercuts, and hooks, and hits to the face uh, in succession from Usman. There are African champions at the welterweight, 170 pounds. Although, you know, again, the weight classes are BS. They're, you know, Usman walks around 193 pounds. Um, Israel Adesanya is the middleweight champion. He's African. They're both Nigerian. And now you have a Cameroonian for the heavyweight champion. Had we had a lightweight African champ, we would have all four divisions. They're saying that UFC should go to Africa now. I agree. I think Ethiopia is the home of the African Union the only uncolonized country in Africa, even though we don't have any great Ethiopian fighters, should be host. And I would love to work as a translator or in any capacity, referee, whatever. Throw me in there, coach. Vote for me if there, if there is such a thing that you ever come across. I hope this reaction video was entertaining and or insightful. If you have any questions, drop the questions. If you support this work, go to patreon.com slash tawahado, p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash tawahado, or join the YouTube channel. No, you can join at $1 a month. Not join at $1 a month, you're going to get way more videos. If you had 1,000 people, 5,000 people join at $1 a month, I would do this full time.